Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with a video looking at the things we want the most in Heroes of Middle Earth. We just got done streaming and talking through a bunch of options. I've also done a video in the past talking through this same kind of topic. And so I've compiled all the data from the streams, from the videos, to put together a list of what I think are the most important and most crucial things we want as a player base for this game. So stay tuned and please let me know if you agree with this list, if I missed major things or what you think in general about the state of the game. Let's go ahead and jump into the list. Now, starting out, the biggest thing that was brought up the most times in the video, as well as the live stream, is just more playable content in the game. Now, this could be several points. We talk about different versions. I'm just going to put them all in one and, and share a few ideas. But I'd love to hear if you guys have ideas on what specific game modes you think would make the most sense starting out in the early game for this. Number one starting out would be the most obvious to me is raids. Raids are going to be at least a weekly playable event. Uh, when there are multiple chapters out, it's going to be, you know, every 24 hours, you can do a different chapter. So it adds something to do uh, potentially four times a week once the raids are kind of fully developed and out there. So raids being released, I think is a very crucial thing. Uh, the, the big thing we talked about is I think everyone wants raids in July. If we have a month, uh, this whole month of July where nothing comes out, we don't have an official release date for raids or they're not released yet. I think we're just going to keep losing more people. I know there have been a wave of people who left the game because of its kind of release state, feeling like it wasn't fully ready to go. And I get that. Uh, then there's kind of the next batch of people who are like either big enough Lord of the Rings fans or like the genre. They understand that it's a long-term thing, whatever it is, uh, the graphics or lack thereof is not an issue to them. Uh, there's that category of people who are still here. And I think if we wait too much longer without confirmed dates and times for specific playable content like raids, I think we're going to be in trouble. Now, a few other types of playable daily content. We're going to use Galaxy of Heroes as an example because obviously they're not in the game. And I want to show you guys if you've not played and aren't familiar, one of the things brought up was a galactic war type of mode or like a tower kind of endurance mode where you go through, you can only use characters one time. So if they die, they're gone for the day and you can't use them. And you try and progress through something now in Galaxy of Heroes, that's, that's galactic war. But there are different games that have tower modes where you just try and go as high up in the tower as you can before being defeated. And along the way, you get rewards. This also introduces a new currency, at least in Galaxy of Heroes. So this could potentially help alleviate some of the issues with gear crunches and gold crunches in Heroes of Middle-Earth. Uh, and as a new player in Galaxy of Heroes, I enjoyed this. Now, it does, after a while, get repetitive, but I don't think it would be meant you know, to be played for years and years. It's just meant for the early game players. So you get in and you have a little bit more to do before you unlock things like Grand Arena, before you unlock all the raids or whatever it is. Now, again, we don't have any of that, but just thinking ahead, it would be something that would be played in the first couple of months as a new player. Then after you beat it enough times, it becomes simmable. So you can just auto it every day and get some rewards. Now, speaking of Grand Arena, it is also one of those things that people talk about a lot. I don't think it's something we'll see for a while because you do need a lot of teams because it's a multi-team type of PVP where you set multiple teams on defense, your enemy does the same, and then whoever you have left on offense is who you use to attack. You get a score up in the top right. It shows you how many banners you get based on how well you do in the battles. And it's a three round type thing. So if you keep going and winning, uh, after, at the end, you can get up to first place rewards or whatever it is. So it's a it's a kind of throughout the week type of event that people build their rosters to compete in. And a lot of people like now there could be something like 3v3 that happens in Heroes of Middle Earth sooner because you'd be able to stretch your rosters a little bit further. But I know people haven't been the biggest fan of 3v3 in Galaxy of Heroes, so I'm not sure if they'll ever do that. But some kind of multi-stage, multi-team PvP, I think at some point will be very, very welcomed. Now, lastly, I've mentioned this a few times. I just think we need some more solo events. We have challenges right now that are sort of faction restricted things that you can do and try and beat better tiers. And Galaxy of Heroes, we have all that as well, but there are all sorts of solo events that just happen. They're on, you know, kind of random timers where there's just different ones happening. So for example, there's one right here that requires the rebel units. And I think this one requires like Geonosians. Yeah, so it just requires specific factions and you can go through different difficulties and get rewards. Again, something that could very easily be added to alleviate the gold crunch, gear crunch, ability material crunch, whatever it is. And as you can see here, there are lots of different ones that are always on the on the upcoming, you know, this one's in four days, four days, one day, three days. So there are different ones that require different factions that go beyond the difficulty of something like a challenge that is just kind of simple and allows you each time they come out to try a more difficult tier to gain kind of better rewards over time. So I think just more solo events uh, in addition to everything we talked about would be a very good place. Now, I do want to make it clear, I don't expect Heroes of Middle Earth to have all these things right away. It is a much newer game. And I think it's very similar in state to like what Galaxy of Heroes was when it came out. So I don't expect all those things at once, but it's been a couple of months and I think we need a little bit of communication and a little bit of, you know, specific things that can add more because people are getting to the point where even in stream today, people were saying, 
I've kind of stopped spending. Like, what am I spending for if I'm spending? I just unlocking characters that I don't really have anything to do with. So uh, I think they have some time, but not that much time to at least get something going and hopefully just keep building on it. But that's the first and most major point is just more playable content. And the next point that I kind of alluded to a few times is the gold crunch in the game. And it was brought up a bunch too, so I want to make it its own point. But there is kind of a gold crunch in this game. We have challenges that even at the max level, it's it's okay, but it just goes so quickly when you're doing it. Everything requires gold, upgrading abilities, equipping gear, leveling up characters. It requires gold and XP materials or and ability materials or and gear pieces. So gold's like needed in addition to everything else you do. So it means it just goes super, super fast. So there's definitely a gold crunch. We've talked about it too. I think they could alleviate that a little bit by adding more gold to all the challenges, whether it be just adding a zero to all these or just adjusting the numbers slightly. I think that would help pretty significantly. So far, the only thing we've got for this is just gold chests, which I know a lot of people are not fans of because it's sort of just a way that you can pay to get more gold, but they're pretty underwhelming. Um, they did kind of go, you know, they get they did a whole spiel about how they they are really trying to take time with the updates they do because they, they understand that updates have a, an impact on the game as a whole. And so this was not maybe the permanent fix for it. Uh, but again, it's been a little while since that came out and we haven't heard anything else about what's going to be happening now. Could raids help fix that? Could different uh, solo events help fix that? Very, very potentially. But right now, players are still feeling the gold crunch. And so far, all we've seen is a chest that you can buy. Uh, so if you're free to play, you still have gold problems. Even if you're a whale, uh, you have to buy a lot of these to get a lot of gold. So you can spend a lot more to alleviate that. Um, but it just, it's kind of, it, it's kind of disappointing. So I think the gold crunch needs to be addressed by means of more content in the game that awards it, or just adjusting how we get it through battles. Right now in the guild battles or the light or shadow campaign, just adding a little bit more per battle would probably go a long, long way. But that's the second point that I think is brought up probably the most or almost as much as playable content. Now, the next few are probably less huge in terms of like effect on the game, but they were brought up and I have heard them a few times. So I want to mention them as well. And I'd love to hear what you guys think. And if there are any like small quality of life updates that you think need to happen, let me know. I'd love to cover those in a future video. But one of the first ones is just a way to review rosters in the game right now if you click on anyone's profile you can see the five characters that they set in their little lineup here which is not necessarily who they're using in arena it's just five characters that they choose to have on their profile you can see what ranks they've gotten in arena so if you click on anybody you can see how high they've gotten up in their arena or what they're currently at and that's it there's no way to look through their roster or anything like that or have any more information on the people you're playing with which for players to help each other and review accounts or do whatever it kind of it's kind of a weird thing and it's something that you can do in Galaxy of Heroes, but it's looking up people's ally, ally codes and then all of a sudden you can see their whole roster, um, see their ranks and everything, all that kind of stuff. So a, a way to view rosters for, for guildmates, for friends, or for just for anybody seems like a no-brainer to me that would allow players to look and help each other out along the way to figure out how people are optimizing their rosters and what they're doing to learn from other players and more powerful guilds, whatever it is. I, I think it's a no-brainer. So some kind of roster review or just way to view roster, I, th I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, another thing that this is from Galaxy of Heroes is a turn order tracker. So right here, we're in a battle. You can see, looking at the blue turn meter, you can see when everyone's gonna go next. And a lot of times it's very easy. You can tell that all my guys are going and, and you know none of theirs are right away. But they added very recently in Galaxy of Heroes a turn meter order. So you can see who is going. There's just a little picture here. And as you progress through, it's just going to rotate and then the next person's going to take the order. You can see when people are going, when your enemies are coming up. So I can see here the next enemy to go is going to be Jedi Knight Revan here. So if you want to try and target people so that they aren't going to have a turn, you can definitely do that. So there he goes. He's defeated. And now you can see the order adjust as so. So my understanding is this is very new to this game, kind of a little bit buggy still. But to me, I would love to see something like this, especially for new players, players who are new to this genre of game, I think are maybe not as used to just eyeballing turn meter, trying to see who's going next or who to go for. So a huge quality of life thing I think would be a turn meter tracker like you see on the screen. And the last point here, I'm just gonna do one more because I want this video to be a little bit short and sweet, is just releasing characters in other ways that are not marquee events. So right now, we've only had characters released, Arwen and Elden through marquees, Elrond who was released in a legendary event requiring those two marquees and other characters in addition to them or at least one of them. And then technically Sam, he is obtainable by using the Road to Rivendell team. Now, I will say as an honorable mention, Sam's event was mentioned a few times in our stream as an odd thing where you use Road Rivendell, uh, but to do chapter two of Sam's adventure, you need four star characters and you only get Sam at four stars by completing this tier. So you have to do tier two of the Gardener's Journey with only four characters. So it doesn't really make sense. Again, it, maybe it won't change at this point, but 
those are the four characters in the game you can get is Sam and then the three elves. So if they added ways to unlock characters, either by means of new game modes or just releasing characters every once in a while, there's a lot of characters in this universe. I think it'd go a long way for those who are free to play or low spenders who don't maybe want to do a marquee every single time. Or maybe you're like me and you do the elf marquee and you're like, I don't know if I want to, if, if the next thing we get, if the next post or big update we get is, hey, new marquees coming, it's going to feel like a slap in the face a little bit because we haven't really got a lot of playable content or other characters that we can play. It's just, if you want them, you got to spend money on them, which I know is the nature of this game to an extent. Uh, but I think if they did add a way to unlock characters or unlock new characters that didn't require just opening packs, I think it'd be, it'd be pretty neat. So let me know what you guys think. I think there's a lot of things we could get into here, but these are some of the things that were brought up in streamer day or in our videos in the past. So wanted to compile that here and see what you guys think. Again, I think the game's young enough that, you know, I think the devs are watching and, and listening. So anytime we can, I'd like to compile information and kind of respectfully present it and say, hey, these are the biggest issues. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below if there are things you agree with, you don't agree with, or, or big things that I missed that you think this game absolutely needs to survive. Because at the end of the day, I'm not interested in just trash talking for the sake of trash talking. I want to, you know, provide some, some feedback or thoughts because I want this game to do well. So that's what I'm trying to do is put these things together and say, hey, this is, I think, what we need. So I'd love if you do the same with me. But that's going to do it for me this one. And as always, I'll see you guys in a future video. Uh.